Hallelujah. Welcome again to the Reporters Ministry channel. This is God in Celestial Church of Christ, a live telecast, whereby we discuss the things that relates with God and the Celestial Church of Christ. My name is Olushola Ademola, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, you know, I worship Jesus in the Celestial Church. Um, this is a live telecast. And we are discussing FIFA Se Eli today, him 71. Him 71. FIFA Se Eli, FIFA Se Eli, Salah Sali, Asala Sa Safe Sali, Tilafeli Asali. That's what we have in him 71. It's a live telecast. At any point in this telecast, you may have a question. Please write your question under the comment section whether on Facebook or on YouTube, depending on the platform that you are viewing us from. And we bring you greetings from the Lord of hosts himself, the God of Celestial Church, the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God and hallelujah. So um, it's going to be a wonderful journey. We are having the part one today. We are just beginning to look into this hymn May the Holy Spirit of God reveal the heart of the Spirit to us as we consider what is the riches of this hymn. How rich, how vast is this hymn? And then also, what does it really mean? What is Fifa say Eli? Fifa say Eli. What is Salah Sali? What is the meaning of Asala Sa? Safi Sali, Tilafelia Sali. What does this mean? What is the interpretation? And then what wisdom do we derive from this? This hymn has been left uninterpreted right from the beginning. Uh, I mean from the origin of the, of the song to us in the Celestial Church. Since the day that the inspired individual spoke about this song it remained like this you check the english five version of him 71 you will see it written exactly as this if you check the yoruba version you will see it written exactly like this now considering this hymn and then the hymn 70 that we talked about last week or that we rounded up last week hymn 70 was him, Farah Sali, Farah Sali, Alali, Tirasiso, Tirasiso, Atali, which means rejoice and bless. Rejoice and bless. Alali is the most high. Tirasiso is a fortress and wisdom. A fortress and wisdom. Sira is Arabic. Siso is Portuguese, a fortress and wisdom. Atali is Arabic, a variant of Alali. And then it means the most high. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Now, looking at this hymn 70, you will find some common words that you have in hymn 70. 
in him 71. For example, you will find Sali. There is Sali in him 70. And also, there is Sali in him 71. So they have a common ground. They have a common ground. And then looking critically at him 71, you will see some words that has been circled for you. Similar words, whether they are variants or they are spelled the same way, but word that means exactly the same thing, maybe as a variant or as the same spelling, are circled for you um, with the same color. Words having similar meaning, whether they are variants of one another in spelling or they have the same spelling, they are circled. So you will see Eli, which is from El, that's a Hebrew word. El, Eli, El. El, Eli, Eli means God. You find it Hebrew word circled in red. Then you have Salah and Asalah. Both of them are the same. Salah and Asalah. That is circled for you in blue color. Abi, this is blue color. Yes, circled in blue. Then you have Sali, and then the other one, Sali, and then you have Asali. You have it in yellow color. In yellow color. Glory be to God. All right, so um, let's begin to look at this. We take the words apart, and then you will we'll begin to look at what does this mean. And by the time we come um, to the next video, by the grace of God, we'll be able to have what is the interpretation. And then we can go to the wisdom that the Lord will give to us from this hymn. It was a wonderful meeting last week when we concluded on um, Farah Sally. And so is it going to be this week also. Glory be to God. It's the hour of light. It's the hour of illumination. And the Lord has raised up reporters' ministry to bring light onto the things that are previously hidden, the things that are previously unknown. Now they are being revealed. And some does not, do not like that we talk about these things. And I do not talk about these things because... I wish to talk about them or because I want to speak about something new or because it is interesting to me. No, it is not. I am just a reporter reporting in the reporter. The reporter of these things is the Holy Ghost. I cannot, as a Yoruba and an English speaking brother, I cannot venture into a language I have never learned. I've never been taught. I don't even know how to look at it, except the Holy Ghost is the one behind it. So I don't want you to be offended if you have taken these songs to be, quote-unquote, heavenly language. And you know what I mean by, quote-unquote, heavenly language. All languages are from heaven. All languages are from God. The language that was scattered at the tower of, at the city of Babel in Genesis chapter 11 is from God. And so, telling you what this means is not a ridicule or an abuse of the grace of God. No, it's, it's, it does not profit you anything if it is remained in this unknown language to you. Because Celestias are basically. Um, English, Yoruba, and Igbo speakers. Those, that's the primary languages in the Celestial Church. All our hymns are either in Yoruba, majorly in Yoruba, 90% or 90, about 99% of it is in Yoruba. And then maybe the, the remaining 1% is Igbo. Right? And then there may be about uh, 0. Point something percent is a language that we do not know. Glory be to God. Or well, let me say 98% is Yoruba. And then probably I've not done the mathematics. I am just 
um, guessing. All right. But what I'm just trying to say is that the majority of the songs is in Yoruba language. All right. And then very few, maybe one like Beli uh, Aono uh, Bonono. All right. That's in the Egun language. And then Yedo uh, Jabo Ezenga, Angeli Jabo Ezenga. That's a good language. Uh, that's, I think those are the primary two songs we may have in the good language. Except if my memory is failing me on any one that I can't remember at the moment. And then we have few of them that are given in a, in a language that we are not used to. A language that is, that is far from our reach. Like Farah Sali, like Fifase Eli, that's him 70 and him 71 respectively. Like Hira Jaman. Jaribam Hiraj Jaman, all right? Like um, Yara Sara, Yara Samata, and um, like Yaraman, He Yaraman. And then there are some few others that came in other languages that we are not familiar with. So when an Ebu man in Celestial Church pick up this hymn, it doesn't profit them anything. And the will of the Holy Ghost is that this thing should be of profit to you, that it should be of advantage to you. Now, I made a statement earlier. I said all languages are from God. And that's why God is going to save everyone from every language. Glory be to God. Men will be saved from all the languages of the world. The book of Genesis, chapter 11. All languages are from God. Genesis chapter 11, the origin of multiplication of languages, multiplication of tongues. Genesis chapter 11, and I will read verse 7. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Glory to God. That they may not take note of that, that they may not understand one another's speech. This is the purpose for scattering the language in Genesis 11. God said, I don't want them to understand one another's speech so that they can, they can forsake building the city of Babel and the tower of Babel. Verse 8 now. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Verse 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Alright. So God does not want them to continue their project. It is against the will of God. He said they will scatter or confound their language. So Babel is actually confusion. And where does this confounded languages come from? From God. So that you, an Indian, will not understand Yoruba. Except now that these languages have been organized, have been put into alphabets, they have been able to write it, all right, and then be able to teach it to others. And then men can also learn from one another. Glory be to God. So God he actually achieved the goal for scattering the languages of man. And that's why a lot of people pay heavy money to learn other languages. The intention is you receive your own tongue, which may be called mother tongue, like the English people used to call it, which is domestic to you. And then you are, you are completely ignorant of the communication of another tribe, another uh, people of another language. But the point remains that these languages are from God and they are the languages of some men spoken somewhere in the world. The fact that you do not know it does not say that everybody in the whole world are ignorant of this language. Glory to God. Glory be to the almighty God. So by the hand of God, languages were scattered and people were meant not to understand it. And then God brought a reverse of it. He brought a reverse of it, which is called speaking in tongues or speaking in other tongues. Other tongues means other languages. A tongue is a language, not the physical tongue 
of a man, all right? Not the organ for speaking, this tongue. But a tongue, biblically, a tongue means a language, all right? So if you say speaking in tongues, meaning speaking in languages, languages. And which language are we referring to? They are actually earthly languages. And if we say speaking in other tongues, we are talking about speaking in languages that is different from your own mother tongue, which you have naturally, societally acquired. That is speaking in other languages. And some have special interest in the King James usage of unknown language. Unknown language is a language that is unknown to you and unknown in your locality, but not unknown to others. Not unknown to others. It may be unknown to you, but it doesn't say it is unknown to everybody in the whole world. And some say that, oh, we have languages of heaven. Yes, there is a language in heaven. And of course, they don't speak Arabic in heaven. God is not an Arabic speaker. God does not speak Hindu. He doesn't speak Yoruba. He doesn't speak Hebrew. God does not speak any of your languages. The language of God is light. But when God speaks, you hear God in your own tongues. And that's why if an angel appeared to me today, the angel is limited to only two choices. Choice number one is an angel will either speak to me in Yoruba language or will speak to me in English language. If an angel is speaking to me in Hausa language, then that angel is speaking in tongues, speaking in other tongues. And you know that angel don't have the gift or the ability of speaking in other tongues. They don't need it in heaven. Speaking in tongues is a sign for unbelievers, not a sign to believers and not a sign among angels. So speaking in other tongues is not something they do in heaven. I understand that you want to protect and you want to believe that some of your songs are angelic tongue. But do I want to tell you, can I tell you that angels don't have a tongue that is synonymous with anyone that we speak on the earth? Will you be willing to hear that? That they don't have any of these, angel, um, these tongues that is spoken on the earth. For example, if an angel speaks to you and you have heard that angel speak to you in French or in Hausa, depending on your local dialect, do you know that when the angel gets back to heaven, he won't speak French or speak Hausa there? The angel will speak the communication of light. This is the language that is going to be spoken. And so when we come to the new earth, we will have a unified language. Glory to God. Whatever that language is, must be the language that is being used in the Garden of Eden. The language of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, in the paradise of God. This is the language that will be spoken in the new earth. Glory to God. So, what is the language of Noah? What language do they speak? Praise God forevermore. So, in heaven also, what language do God use to communicate with the angels? When he speaks to the angels, what do they hear? God say. Glory be to God. God is a spirit. He doesn't have mouth like us. Although the Bible describes the mouth of God, the hand of God, the leg of God. But we know that those, those, those are, are literal, um, are, they are works of literature. They are works of literature. It is the appearance, the form that God appears to people that makes them to see him in a certain way. Glory be to God forevermore. God is like a, um, let me leave that for now because that is not part of the, of the assignment. Acts chapter 2, I wanted to show you that all languages are from heaven. Let's see the Holy Ghost. The what happened in Acts chapter 2 was ascribed to the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them cloven tongues the bible says and i told you that a tongue may mean either literary tongue literal tongue or a language but this one is as of a fire divided tongues divided languages scattered languages from one language 
you, br you are bringing out multiple languages from one language. So from the language of God, the light which God speaks, we are bringing out multiple languages. So all languages are from God. The language of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden was not acquired or given to them by their parents. We can't even call it a mother tongue because there was no society, there was no environment apart from the environment of God. The Bible says God planted a garden. God planted a garden. And the only humans in, those gar in that garden was Adam and Eve. And they communicate in that garden. By what language did the serpent communicate with Eve? Is communicated with Eve in the language that Eve can understand. So in the realm of the spirit, there is no language. Amen? In the realm of the spirit, there is no language. In the spirit realm, when our soul is in the realm of God, we don't need Hausa or English or Yoruba or French or Ibibio or, or, or Fulani or whatever it is. No, you don't need it there. There is this communication that is not mostly uttered, but is also uttered. Most of the time, these communications are not uttered, and yet they are uttered. And we can hear. Even your thought of your heart can be seen. Do you hear me? The thought of your heart in the realm of the spirit, something you have never opened your mouth to say, is very loud to everyone in the realm of that spirit. So in the place of the dead, even in the place of the dead, when people communicate, they don't have to be of the same language. Glory to God. Do you know that people in hell today are communicating with one another? And there are so many people from all manners of tribes in, the, in, in hell today. People, Chinese are in hell. Hindus are in hell. Hebrews are in hell. Um, Arabic, uh, Arabians are in hell. Africans, Yoruba people are in hell. All manners of people are in hell and they speak and they understand. Glory be to God forevermore. The language of Abraham will clearly be different from the language of the rich man and Lazarus. Will clearly be different because Hebrew language has evolved over the years. When they went for captivity for 70 years and they came back, there are some changes that happened to their world, like God and some other words like that, which I don't want to um, bother you with in this um, today's um, episode. All right. So, and Abraham was not ignorant of any of the dialect that um, Hebrew language has evolved into. He wasn't ignorant. He didn't say, wow, I don't know what you meant by this type of, this, type of um, this kind of word. What does it mean? In, that, in my time, we don't speak this kind of word. He was not ignorant. There is always a free flow communication in the realm of the spirit, whether in the place of the dead or in the heavenlies among the angels, among Departed souls and angels, you do not need all these kind of languages. So when God speaks, it is um, divided like a cloven tongues. Cloven means to divide. It's divided and you can hear your own in the voice of God. So if we are 40 in a place, 40 in a place, and we are from different languages, we speak different languages. And God wants to speak to us. God will speak to us and then you will hear God. What did Saul say in the book of Acts chapter 9? He said, Jesus called unto him in the Hebrew tongue. In the Hebrew tongue. Christ spoke to Saul in the Hebrew tongue. Glory be to God forevermore. Glory be to God forevermore. Acts chapter 4, chapter 9 rather. Acts chapter 9 and verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And then he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And let's go to chapter 22. And let's hear from Paul again. 22 verse 7 now. 22, 7. And I fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Okay, this one did not tell me the language. Let me go to 26. 26, verse 14. Hebrews 26, verse 14. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, 
And you know how many languages Paul speak, right? He can speak Roman language. He can speak the Hebrew language because he has dual citizenship. He's an Hebrew man and also a Roman. Glory to God. And he can speak both languages. But he had God spoke to him in his mother tongue. In Hebrew language. Glory to God. Is Jesus a Hebrew in heaven? No. Was Jesus a Hebrew before he came to the earth? When he was the word of God? Before the word became flesh? What language did Jesus speak in heaven? Was he Hebrew? No. We all know that Jesus Christ is not Hebrew. Jesus is not Aramaic. Jesus is God. He is God, the father of Hebrew, the father of the Gentiles, the father of the Mesopotamians, the father of the Canaanites, the father of Africans. This is who Jesus Christ is. Back to Acts chapter 2. I'm giving some education to people who does not like this kind of a thing. That why are you talking about Pharaoh Sadi? Leave it that way. The Holy Ghost gave us that way. He didn't interpret it for a reason. Yes, the Holy Ghost did not interpret it then but is doing so now and is using a man that has never learned arabic cannot speak arabic don't never learned hebrew can't speak hebrew after this class you speak hebrew i don't know what you are saying you speak arabic i don't know you speak portuguese i don't know what you are saying but when it is time for me to talk about these things he opened my eyes and then he gave me a clue Unto how, like he said, he will lead you or guide you into all truth. He will give me a clue of where to go, how to look for it. And I'll be doing that in just a minute. Verse 3 again, Acts 2 verse 3. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire. And it sat upon, and it sat upon each of them, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. That means other languages. As the Spirit gave them. Or Terrans. So all languages are from God. And you will hear those languages very soon. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. That's why Jerusalem Jews, devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Out of how many nation? Every. Now when these were noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because that every man had them speak in his own language. Verse 7, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these, all of them, the Bible says, are not all these which speak Galileans? They speak Galileans. Verse 8, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? They were speaking our mother tongue. How come? They are able to do that. This is the opposite of the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel is for scattering. The Acts chapter 2, Pentecost Day is for gathering. Because when they spoke in tongues in part of Babel, other languages, they scattered. But now when they spoke in tongues, other tongues, they gathered. Glory be to God. It's a reversal of what happened on the day uh, at the city of Babel. Glory to God. So, Verse 8 again, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, a tongue we acquired from our locality, we acquired from our society, from our tribe. That's what they were speaking. They were speaking verse 10, free gear. Sorry, verse 9, not verse 10. They were speaking Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus. And Asia, verse 10, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya. All right, parts. Own mother language. Glory be to God. Now let's go to um, verse 30, 71. Him 71, rather, not verse. Him 71. FIFA say, Eli, your language here is from heaven. This language is from God, for all languages are from God. I have settled that scripturally already. But the language that heaven speaks to us on the earth is a language that must be understood in the earth or that can be understood in the earth. Let me, hear, let me say that again. Every language 
that God speaks to the dwellers of the earth is a language they can understand because it will not profit God anything Hallelujah. Okay, um, the network is just uh, being epileptic this this minute, and uh, but I was just about to round up on the introduction of FIFA say early today. I was saying I want to say that again that I don't know if you had it the first or the second time, but let me say it again for the third time. If God speaks to us in heavenly language. It will not profit us anything. And the messages of God are given for edification. And how do I know this? That God will not speak to anybody in heavenly language. The reason is because in the church of Jesus, it is not allowed for a prophet or a prophetess or someone with the ability to speak in other tongues to speak a language that the audience cannot understand. It is not allowed. If you cannot interpret it, you keep quiet in the church. You don't speak in the church. So whatever angel that is speaking to you, whose message you are relating to the people, that angel, must know that you must speak in a language that the people should understand. All right. And so, why do God speak to people? Why do God speak to people? He speaks to people so that they can hear and so that they can hearken to his word. God does not speak to people so that they can gather words that are unknown on the earth and by that sensitize themselves all right get into the euphoria of those words and speak in a language and go into trance and go into spirit by it no the communications of god are so important he said that the words which i speak unto you they are life giving spirit John 6, 63. The words which I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so if you hear God's word, you are quickened, you are enabled. So God wants you to hear his word. And therefore I want to submit to you. The languages that are spoken among the people of God must be a language that is understood or spoken in one part of the, of the world. It must be known on the earth. If you alone are speaking to God, God can give you angelic tongues. He can give you, quote and unquote, heavenly tongues. After all, all languages are from heaven. They are from God. We already settled that. But he can give you a language, if God so desire, a language that it is, that is not known anywhere. I just, I just want to accept that. All right, but it cannot be for the people of God. It cannot be. This hymn 71 was given to the church of Jesus Christ. And as long as it is given to Celestia Church, it must be a language they can understand. This, this is the reason why at this time the Lord is bringing us light to understand what these things means that we may glorify God with it because these are purely songs of praise. Looking at that hymn, hymn 71, you have FIFA. You have C, you have Eli. If you don't know anything, you will be very familiar with Eli. Eli is an Hebrew word, all right? It means God. It means God. You have that in Matthew 27 and verse 46, where Jesus Christ said, Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabachthani. All right? So we know what Eli is, and we know what language Eli is. So don't say that hymn 71 is an heavenly song. No. This is a earthly communication. Heavenly communication to the earth, I mean to say. So earth must understand what it means. What is Sali? Sali is an Arabic word. I've told you in some hymn 70. Sali means to bless. All right? 
you must have had Sali Allah before. Sali Allah. You must have had those kind of words before. Glory be to the Almighty God. Or Allahumma Sali. I spoke about this um, in Farah Sali part two. Allahumma Sali or Sali Allah. Glory to God. So Sali means to bless. All right. What is Salah or Asalah? If you have not heard much, you must have heard about Asalam Alekum. Asalah al Assalam alaikum. So salah or salam alaikum or assalam alaikum. So salah is purely Arabic. All right. Asali is a variant of sali. Sali and asali are variants of one another. Glory be to God forevermore. This is the foundation and the introduction I would like to give on FIFA Seili by the Spirit of God. We shall be back next week to go deeper into this message. Till then, remain in the love of Christ and may the light of God continually burn in your heart in Jesus' mighty name. May the eye of our understanding be enlightened in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peace be upon you in Jesus' mighty name. See you another time. Amen.